Get ready, gonna hit the flow. Job talking, really good time. Everybody, grab yourself for some wine. Job talking with Shandy. Job talking with Shandy. Job talking with Shandy. Job talking with Shandy. My God, that was solid as can be. I am becoming the uh, Lenny Kravitz of, uh, of uh, keyboard playing. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing? And welcome back to another edition, uh, episode 15 of Jive, talking with Shane Diablo. Lots of stories to get to, lots of things to talk about. This is not uh, Lenny Kravitz, by the way. This is Slash. We're going to get to that story in a minute, but I have a grievance I have a very angry grievance that I need to talk to you about. The last episode. Do you remember the last episode that we did? Uh, do you remember in that episode there was a video that was playing? It was that lousy slash. Uh, it, maybe it's not lousy. I don't know. I'm just very angry at this point. But it was that slash and Miles Kennedy video that was playing. We weren't talking about it. We weren't looking at it. It was just happened to be they have it on auto start or whatever. Uh, they ding me for that. So I had to contact him and say, hey, uh, I don't give two squirts about that. And uh, I don't know why you're dinging my video because it happens to be playing in the background. Uh, I don't even think we had a, a, a complete shot of the damn thing the whole time because we were talking about other newses, important newses, uh, and they, were, they, ding, they ding my video. So there you have that. Uh, enjoying a nice uh, beer today. It just, it really got under my skin there, man. It really got under my skin because I was like, there's no copyrights. There's, we've done nothing wrong here. And uh, yeah, you did because um, the video was playing and, and the algorithm or whatever saw it and decided to punish you for it. So let's get into some hot news because the news happens all the time. Slash never intended to make his top hat part of his signature look. You can't go anywhere or see any images without this guy and his sunglasses and his top hat on. Appetite for destruction, you could pick out right away easily, very easily, who Slash was in the picture because it had a top hat on it. But uh, I was curious about this. He accidentally um, uh, was wearing his hat. This is during an appearance at a talk show Conan O'Brien podcast. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Yeah, I've heard a couple of them. That's his podcast. Uh, February the 21st, Slash opened up about his trademark black top hat, explaining that it dated back to 1985 when he first started playing shows with Guns N' Roses. I stole it from a place called Retail Slut and Melrose in Los Angeles. Uh, as transcribed by Blabbermouth, so hold on tight. There might be some, I might be goofing here. I remember this because there was two stores. There was a leather and treasures and a retail slut next door. And Tamey Down, you know him, he's the singer and uh, for the band Faster Pussycat, used to work at Retail Slut. So that's how I remember the name of it. And I went in there. I didn't have any money. I always used to wear some sort of hat. Uh, it completely, um, it completely, whatever look, uh, to complete whatever look I had going on. And I went in there and I just saw the top hat. And it just spoke to me. It said, man, Slash, put me on and you're going to get, you're going to have a good time, I guess. So I figured, what the fuck? I'll just walk out with it. And tame, was Tammy down behind the counter? And he wasn't happy about that? And so I did. And then I went next door to Leathers and Treasures and stole a concho belt. And then went back to my apartment, me and Axel, Axel Rose, lead henchman, lead singer for Guns N' Roses, uh, were living in at the time, and uh, uh, we had a show at the Whiskey A Go-Go that night, so I took the concho belt and I cut it up, 
and I put it around the hat. Oh, that's where he got that little belt that goes around the, the top hat. And I wore it that night. Slash added. It just became a thing where I really identified with it. I wore it all the time. It was a way you, uh, you pull it over your eyes. You could hide behind it. Uh, if you were really high. I had no intention of it becoming a long-term thing. It was really something to hide behind for a long time. Yeah, because you get nervous up there on stage. Even even today, rock stars and stuff, they'll, they'll drink and smoke and do all these things, you know, smoke a little crack or whatever to get over the nervousness of getting on stage. That's why they have all the, the beers and whiskeys and everything in the background. And so he, he would wear that hat and he would kind of he would kind of cover himself up. He was secure in his gu guitar rock rockage, but he wasn't secure in in him in himself. Even probably after many re millions of records sold, um, uh, it was really something to hide behind for a long time. Um, it was just put the hat on and nobody knows who I am and what I'm doing and what I'm up to. I can see you, but you can't see me. And during the show, it was great to have that. Because to this day, I still can't look at an audience. Did I just tell you this? What did I just say to you five seconds ago? Like straight into the audience. And so having the top hat really, uh, you just put it, it, it down and you could just do your thing. And you don't feel as intimidated by the crowd. So there you have that. Let's see what he says here. Slash previously told Huff Post in 2008, or 2008 interview that it took him a while to find his signature look. I tried a couple different hats, he said. I always thought bowlers and fedoras were cool, but nothing that stuck out and be, as being my thing. You have to explore trial and error until you find your own edge. Yes, I agree with that. Always explore, you know. Um... It'll come to you, baby. Just keep trying. Trying new things is is, a, is always a good thing to do. If you feel like if you've been wearing a uh, you know a sombrero for years and you're like it's time to make a change, then try a top hat or a bowler hat or a baseball hat or a or you know there's several different kinds of hats you can try out. So good job there. I wanted to look into this Cannibal Corpse. Cannibal Corpse fans chant fuck Chris Barnes at Reading concert. Now, I don't know what the story was behind this Chris Barnes. Of course, he's the singer for Six Feet Under. And I know that uh, old uh, uh, Corpse Grinder said something to him about death metal being alive and well. And I remember old Chris Barnes because when I was a teenager, my heavy metal band at the time opened up for Cannibal Corpse, Cynic, and Sinister. And Chris Barnes was the singer. I think it was the Tomb of the Mutilated uh, record. A group of Cannibal Corpse fans at the band's concert in Pennsylvania shouted an insulting epithet for the band's former frontman, Chris Barnes, apparently inspired by his recent comments that he despises what the death metal genre has become. Oh, good. So we're going to get into this here. Last month, Barnes, who exited Cannibal Corpse in 1995, one year after the release of the band's The Bleeding album, uh, took to Twitter to say that he saw a January 19th not festival, not f not fest, a death metal roundtable hosted by Stay Puffed Mallow and featuring appearances by Cannibal Corpse singer George Corpse Grinder Fisher, Trevor Str Sternod uh, from the Black Dahlia Murder, Chase Mason from Gate Creeper. Those guys are heavy as get out of all get out of town. Uh, Alex Jones of Undeath. I just watched a death metal podcast on YouTube that was done about a week ago with the top, doink, doink, top death metal vocalist, he wrote. It made me physically ill. I despise what this genre has become. Oh boy, that's not good. <laughs> At the Reading Cannibal Corpse show on Monday, February 21st, some members of the crowd chanted, Fuck Chris Barnes. I mean, when I saw that the crowd was chanting something, I said, well, what could it be? I mean, there's only a few options for, for death metal fanatics, right? And it's got to it's gotta go on a beat. Fuck Chris Barnes. Fuck Chris Barnes. Because everything goes like that, you know? Motley Crew, Motley Crew, Twisted Sister, 
twisted. You know, you got to be able to spit that shit out in a fairly good rhythm. Um, for nearly 20 seconds in between songs, after which Fisher responded, You said it, not me. Fan film video of the exchange can be seen below. After Barnes left Cannibal Corpse to form Six Feet Under, he was replaced in the former band by Fisher. Five years ago, Barnes spoke about the possibility of Six Feet Under and Cannibal Corpse one day touring together, telling the Chainsaw Symphony radio program, that would be a tough one to put together, my friend. You wouldn't have any problems for my side of things, but I don't think other people would be agreeable to that. Is he a Bob Baby Titty Mouse? I don't, I don't know much about um, Chris Barnes. Uh, there was a long period of time I tuned out on Cannibal Corpse. I mean, I'm still kind of tuned out on him. I'll hear new jams and stuff, but I uh, Butchered at Birth, uh, um, um, that album that came out next, um, Tomb of the Mutil Mutilated, I believe it's called, those were, and The Bleeding, those were the albums that I was listening to. And then I've heard other jams with uh, uh, Fisher. He's been in there longer than than uh, than Chris Barnes now, hasn't he? He continued, I don't think there's animosity between us. I think there's just protecting other people's feelings. I think that everyone knows certain things about everything, and they'd like to see things a certain way, and that wouldn't portray things a certain way that they would want to portray them. So... I'm being very general and trying to be diplomatic about it. So he's got secrets he can tell. Let's see if this video is. Here we go. That's a tight little club there. There he said it. He said, huh? <laughs> you said it, not me. Uh, uh, Corpse Grander is a, is a sweet fellow for the most part. I mean, he, he sings songs like I Come Blood and um, all of that, but Hammer Smashed Face and everything like that. But uh, he's a pretty sweet fellow. Uh, there is a great video of him shopping at Target. He loves Legos and Barbie dolls and all sorts of fun things. And he goes to Target and shops those. So if you're interested, look it up. Corpse Grinder goes to Target. And you'll just have a, you'll have a gay old time with that. I saw this too. Oh my heavens to Betsy. Glenn Timpton fires back at K.K. Downing. His accusations have gotten sillier and sillier. Oh boy. Oh boy, here we go. Let's see what this is about. Glenn Timpton is fired back and Kenneth K.K. Downing. Is that his name, Kenneth? That's a, that's a good name. Kenneth, put those cookies back. It's almost dinner. Hey, Mom. Come on, man. I just want one bleeding cookie. Uh, claiming that uh, former Judas Priest uh, guitarist has been saying things about him that are crazy and aren't fair. Yeah, he said something about everyone want, paid attention to Glenn Timpton and not him and that uh, uh, Glenn Timpton drank beer before their concerts. KK left Priest in 2011 amid claims of band conflict, shoddy management, and declining quality of performance. In 2018, Downing revealed that he sent two resignation letters to his bandmates when he decided to quit Judas Priest. The first was described as a graceful exit note implying a smooth retirement from music, while the second was angrier, laying out all of his frustrations with specific parties. I did hear that he wanted to start a golf course or something like that. And then when it kind of floundered, he wanted back in the band. I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, Downing later said that he believed the second letter was a key reason he wasn't invited to rejoin Priest after Timpton, Timpton's decision to retire from touring. In a new issue of Guitar World, Timpton offered his side of the story saying that he never wanted to get into a public argument with KK. Uh, left. I never said, when KK left, I never said a word. I stuck to my guns for over 10 years, but there comes a point when you read things and you have been, uh, 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 things that have been said that are just crazy, he said. It's time to say something, really, because he's saying things that he really shouldn't be saying. They aren't fair. 
Oh, boy. He's insinuated that he was the driving force of the band. The 74-year-old continued, It just isn't true. Priest is made up of five guys working together. Yeah. Uh, there's not just one person driving the band, he said. All of these things that I think are meant to upset us and get us to say something in response are for a long time we didn't. For a long time we didn't do that. But I've got a lot of things, a lot, of, lot to say, and enough's enough. Oh boy. Uh, the 70 year old uh, Downing, who wrote about his departure from Priest uh, in his 2018 audio autobiography, Heavy Duty Days and Nights in Judas Priest, said last year that he was unhappy with the band's live performances toward the end because Glenn used to have too many beers before and during the concert at the time. And I don't know what was going on. We had words about it, but basically we weren't at as foot sure as I felt I wanted to be. I wasn't really happy with that. He was drinking beers. It was rock and roll. This He's talking about this. It's, it's like not like um, he was drinking beers every day for the last 50 years, though, right? It was rock and roll. It's one of those things. It's rock and roll. Or you're a band that really wants to lock it in tight. And that's what I used to get off on musically was being really solid and locked in. You got me locked in, locked inside your love. Buy yourself a Diet Coke if you know what album that's from. Um, and that's what I used to get off musically, uh, was being so solid and locked in with those kick drums. You're either Keith Richards, and he's got a beer in one hand and a cigarette in the other, but you're still playing the guitar, or you're really digging deep. He really doesn't like the fact that Glenn Tempton has some beers, does he? In the Guitar World interview, Tempton dismissed Downing's claims as silly. They're bleeding silly. Everyone knows it's not true, he said. Like I said, the fans aren't stupid, and they've seen me for 50 years playing around the world. I may have had a couple of beers on stage, but that's all. It's never affected the concert or my performance whatsoever, and he knows that, this bleeding fool. Timpton went on to say he used to piece Downing's leads together in the studio. I did a lot of editing to make his leads, his lead breaks worthwhile. Oh, that's hitting the jugular, the jugulator, because you, you don't talk about a man's guitar solo, his guitar performance. Going in there and saying you have to shoot, you have to edit things, that's not. I would never have talked about Ken that way. And now he's calling him Ken. He continued, it's just that his accusations have gotten sillier and sillier, uh, sillier, and I deserve to respond. He left the band, we couldn't convince him to stay, and then he accused me of taking six years off to write two solo albums. I only did the solo albums because we were inactive at the time, while Rob Halford, vocals, was doing his solo things. So there you have that. What does it say down here from, from KK Ken, Ken Downing? In Heavy Duty Days and Nights in Judas Priest, Downing wrote that he told Tempton and Priest co-manager Jane Andrews that he had hated them both since 1985. Last year, he explained his outburst to Classic Rock magazine. I was angry. Glenn had formed a relationship with Jane uh, from day one, and it felt a bit like John and Yoko situation. I didn't like that. So he's very sad guy, isn't he? He he's not happy when other people are doing things. He's he's kind of a he pays attention to what everyone else is doing instead of what he's doing. Is is that what I'm kind of getting? Let's see if K.K. Downing fires back on Glenn Tempton. A pew, 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 right? Um, let's look into this little nugget. I says, what? Brett Michaels is going to give us an inside peek on how he writes a, a hit song? Get out of here. Get behind the scenes peek into Brett Michaels' songwriting process. There's a three-minute video it said here. 
Brett Michael's official YouTube channel has updated with a three and a half, not three, not two and a half, but three and a half minute video in which fans can get an inspirational peek behind the scenes into the songwriting process with the Poison Frontman. Check out the clip below. Michael's capped off the 2021 Nothing But A Good Vibe tour with select uh, solo performances and festivals. Uh, is now preparing Poison's upcoming stadium tour with Motley Crue and Def Leppard, which begins on June 16th in Hotlanta, Georgia. Uh, let's see. Let's see what he's got going on here. He's got a bit of sun. He's either got uh, a little bit of sun or he's got some dirt on his face. He was out fixing the tranny on the car and uh, he didn't realize that. I'm going to turn this volume up here as well so we can get a taste of this. All starts before you get to that big show out on the road. Yeah. I just want to say this. You, you, it's all to me. Music is therapeutic and it all starts right in here in the studio. Forget about the gear, forget about everything. It's just nice to have some stuff. You can put it down and basically you're taking... I mean, but let's be honest. He's got some sweet-ass gear there. Forget about the gear. Forget about everything. Emotion. You're taking a thought. You're taking a feeling. Turning it into something, right? So I get in here. I'm in Pete's studio. I was on the East Coast and just had a bunch of ideas. Going through my... Yeah, let's see it. With the drum beat, it'll just start... <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Like... Nirvana, he's going to play Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah, it starts like that. You got that. And then I have this counter melody going on. Oh, trumpets. Something in that vein, right? Something like that. Just start it. Don't matter if you can do it right. Do it out there, right music he's either doing the Black Crows or he's doing uh, Nirvana or a mix of them. Um, but I always tell people, don't at first overthink it. Get in there and start to lay some stuff down and let it create, man. Get like me with my Put keyboard. Your mind into it. The next thing you know, the one sound you had, uh, that doesn't work anymore. You move that out do this. But that's why get into a studio, stuff you can just purchase. Does it give you something to believe in, Brett? Lay this down. I lay most of it down on my phone. A lot of times a drum beat, right? I just lay it down on my phone, just play the guitar to it. It's a beatboxer. Harmonica, whatever. But uh, for me, I start to get that sound, and I look over here, and I find the horns, right, laying down. Oh. This is a little feel. Is this going to be the lousiest record ever? Brett Michaels is going to have keyboard trumpets. Going back and forth like that. I like that feel, right? And, uh, and this is kind of what it came out like. Jesus. Get some. Get some. Here I am, the man on the scene. Oh. No, 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 yeah. Take it off, baby. Take off your blouse. Take off your pants. Is this going to be the worst song he's ever... Uh, Hit it, Ricky Martin. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. So, yeah, there you have that. I mean, that wasn't... Uh, he's just uh, showing you a, a couple of quick things. Beginning of that riff sounded like uh, Teen Spirit. And then the other part sounded like uh, the Black Crow song. And the man was the man is be red. I can love you, not the man, but I can love you better than him, right? But that's where you take inspiration from. If you're a songwriter, you know this. 
nothing is is technically um, original, right? Because you just say, Brett Michaels is sitting there in the studio and, and, and just, or maybe he was laying in bed. He's, he's laying in bed naked at night, but, you know, completely naked, but he's got his cross uh, necklace on and his bandana. And he said, what would happen if Nirvana and the Black Crows made love on a song? And they had Mighty Mighty Boston's trumpet section in there. And there you go. There you have a song. So you're taking inspiration from all over the place. If you don't know who Mighty Mighty Boston's are, for God's sakes, what are you doing? Go listen to it. Ska, ska punk band, Mighty Mighty Boston's. Everyone's heard them. They they know they had a couple huge hits. Um, we're getting close to your your uh, comments here, but I did want to, I did have another thing here. Corey Taylor's wife. I married my best friend. I just thought that was adorable. There's Corey Taylor. He's the Slipknot. He's the I think he's number one. Uh, if they're going by those numbers, one through eight or whatever, I think he's number one. And uh, this is his lovely bride. And she says, I married my best friend. So I wanted to see, we can all learn a lesson in love, can't we? We can all learn a few techniques and uh, and uh, this is the guy to do it. So uh, in a new interview with Al uh, Alamo True Metal, Alicia Taylor, a professional dancer, of course, and a member of the all-girl dance group, the Cherry Bombs, asked uh, what drew uh, what drew her initially to her husband. Um, heavy metal music, um, a massive, uh, extremely fat wallet, and who wa who doesn't want to say that I'm married to the singer for Slipknot? Of the past two and a half years, Slipknot and Sa Stone Sour frontman Corey Taylor. And this is her. She she chimes in. And, of course, uh, Blabbermouth's going to help us out with the transcription here. Uh, the first thing I fell in love with with Corey was his mind. He is so smart, she said. He's so well-read. He could talk about anything. And his interests are all over the place. And I love that about him. I love his intelligence. I love his ability to write and speak so well. He's extremely articulate. I love that he's a little geeky and a little nerdy, too. And I uh, loves movies. And he loves music. And he loves sports. And he loves so many things. And he's so well-rounded in that aspect. And he's got a huge wallet full of money in it. So he and I would just talk about anything and everything and just find something even if it wasn't something that maybe I was I wasn't that I wasn't into and he was really into or he wasn't really into but I was really into and we still talk about it and find something cool about it within one another we are best friends Alicia continued is her name Alicia or Alicia let's say Alicia because I feel like that's proper and I know everybody says that. It's so cliche. I married my best friend, but it's true. I have to tell you that it is very, very true. My loving, my, we love hanging out, man. We love exploring and doing things and traveling. And every day is an adventure together. I think it was his mind, absolutely, that I fell in love with first. And his gi ginormous penis. Second, that drew me to him. The ginormous penis, I, I did I, I don't I can't confirm or deny that. Uh, I just threw that in there. Uh, we had been acquaintances for many years before we started dating. And our industry is so small. In our industry, everyone knows everybody or everyone knows someone through someone. The degree of sep the, the degree of separation is this big, holds two fingers close together. Creak, 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 creak. So we had started planning that Stone Sour 2017 tour with the ch 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 Cherry Bombs. That's our dance troupe. And I have a surprise for you guys because we're going to watch a clip. Uh, and when, you're t tour when you tour together, you're around each other a lot. I mean, there's nowhere to go. And we just connected so quickly and easily. And I mean, man, well... We'll be together five years now, coming up this year, and it's still the same. Nothing has changed. It's just 
Uh, us two dicks having fun. <laughs> and we do. We have lots of fun. And it's so easy when it's with the right person. And nothing's hard. It just is the way it is. And, li and it's life. And you enjoy every day of it. Not to get too sappy on you or anything, but it really is the coolest thing I've ever felt in my life. Is love. <laughs> cherry bombs. So this is the cherry bombs. We're going to watch them in action. You can see some bum cheeks there. I don't know if there's four or five of them. There was another clip where there was two girls spinning upside down on a flaming uh, triangle or something. Uh, but it wasn't his wife. She was standing off to the side kind of giving a, I don't know, description or something. Melinda, your legs are too far apart. Bring them in on the bar. I don't know. I think she's the uh, the head head dancer here with the hair in the air. Um, and, and just as a side note, um, we're going to watch some of this video. But um, I had to uh, mute the music because it was going to ding my video. It was, listen all y'all, it's a sabotage is what they're dancing to. So I thought in order to avoid that, I would uh, do a little, do a little uh, music. Let's see. Do we want to go 6-6, six, six, feel crazy? Oh, that's good. So let's just uh, turn this video on and you're going, we're going to watch her do dancing. Keep your eyes on this one here because this is, I'm sure she is a uh, grade A professional dancer Juilliard School of Dance and all of that, but um, I didn't want to get dinged on this video for list for sabotage. So, so let's see what they can do, and I'll put a little music to it. Here we go. Yeah, look at her. Slipknot shirt. Throw the bras now. Do the running dog. Shake the booty, fall back on the back. Leg spread. Shaking the ass cheeks. Spin around. Come on, you want some? Attacking the audience. Spin the hair. Wow, in the back there, they got the, the girls like spreading the legs and then the other girls coming to sit down in them. Yeah. I'm the sexy lady. You might know me, I'm Corey Taylor's wife. They all had to leave the stage so she could have a bit of solo. Okay, that's good enough for that. I did want to point out really quickly that that, uh, okay, you can see one that's climbing up a cloth over there. This is the portion of the video where they go ape shit crazy. You're going to bowl flyer. You're going to use uh, those, uh, uh, what are you, spin it around, hula hoops. You're going to climb a piece of red cloth over here. And uh, I did want to point out that you saw that triangle coming out right there. They light that on fire and two girls were on it. Uh, but Cherry Bomb, uh, 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 Corey's wife was not on that. She was standing there like harping at him. Um, oh, maybe this is the bit. Yeah. She's kind of just standing off to the side here like, are you guys doing it right? I mean, it looks good, and I'm not involved in it. So, I mean, it really is cool what you guys are doing, but I'm not part of it. So it kind of P P.O.'s me. Uh, let's get into your comments. I hope that I hope you enjoyed that. By God, 
it went perfectly with it if you're watching the YouTube video version. If you're listening on Spotify, you got to go watch it because I thought my keyboard was perfect with their dance riffs. Uh, and we still got the uh, closing uh, regale for me to do. Uh, let's get into your comments this week. We have six of them. Um, Ed Z, new fella over at the Patreon. Great Paul Stanley impression. Your Gene Simmons is not bad either. Uh, I think you're just being nice. The Gene was really off the mark. Uh, but my Paul wasn't too bad. His one, you guys like rock and roll, don't you? You know, KK looked like uh, my Mima uh, when she was angry with me. Also, uh, you see, and that's weird that he says KK looked like my angry Mima. Uh, and he was acting like an angry Mima on this episode, wasn't he? You could never be a flaming asshole. You're too kind and hilarious. Great video. Be well and healthy, my friend. Thank you, thank you, my friend, my friend. There you go, Pling. There's your heart. White bread, our friend White Bread coming in. The 70-pound wigs, I'm sure, doesn't make it easy to play your instrument. I actually uh, bought the new KK album. I've listened to it twice. Not that great. I read Bob's uh, Rob's uh, book recently. KK sounded like he was a constant complainer. I mean, I'm telling you. That's what I'm getting from this episode. Judas Priest is also the uh, also a business in reality, yes. Blabbermouth is terrible. Always taking quotes from other interviews and stirring the, pop, the plot. Yeah. I mean, you know, the reason why I like Blabbermouth is because um, it fits on my, you know, it's all kind of uh, succinct. So when I'm doing the videos, I can put it all together. And I don't have to... Uh, you know, zip around from website to website and realign things, you know. I'm lazy when it comes down to white bread. I'm, I'm lazy. I'm sorry. Um, there's your heart, white bread. There you go. James Tate. Shane, take a listen to a little-known band called Pine Siren. Check out uh, 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 check out Dance for, for Your Lover. Oh. Or Sister Whiskey. This is Attitude Rock. James, um... I'm going to give you a heart, and I'm going to have to come back, and you're going to have to remind me of that once again, because I'll forget it. But anything that's dance for your lover, I'm instantly hooked. I'm, I'm in there. Okay, and we got Mike Buchanan coming in here. Sorry, uh, can you do the kiss portion over again? I was a little distracted by Slash and Miles. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. They dinged me at my damn video. Spot on Paul Stanley, my friend. Thank you. Um... Sorry, once again, you're going to have to do the KK portion over again, Slash and Miles again. Yeah, it was, it was, it was on there several times. I wonder if they got some kind of complaints, because this time around there wasn't videos that instantly played in there. But that seemed to me like a commercial. That video that kept scrolling through and playing instantly, it was like they paid for a commercial or something. Dang it, there's Slash, yeah, it's a... Let's see, uh, what does he say? Sorry, we got we to do the whole thing because it'll be better that way. Sorry, once again, you're going to have to do the KK portion over again. Slash and Miles again. Dang it, there's Slash and Miles again. Guess I'm not going to, I'm not getting any news this week. Yeah, it was very uh, irritating. There, here's your heart. There she is, Miss Althea. I don't know what's going on with her comments. I don't. I couldn't even find him in the uh, pit of uh, despair, aka the the uh, spam folder. But she is here now. The dumbstruck fool says she is here. I never left, but apparently this feature within a feature has not been deemed acceptable by YouTube standards and the powers that that be made that that be made me. Comenta non grata on episode 10, 12, and 13 for reasons unknown. Yeah, they're not in there. I don't know what happened to them. Fingers crossed this one will make it, and it did. My feeling on present day kiss are known to you frequent flyers, so that the fate of the cruise with a K in the in in is inconsequential to me. At this point, I feel like the venture should be pitched as an unscripted TV sitcom. I'd watch it. Um, Love Boat meets Below Deck. I don't know what be Below Deck is, but I, I'm interested. And Air on Reels. Is that a channel that I need to know about? Real it, reels, like reality TV? 
I totally agree with my old flame KK on the Ripper Owens chapter of the Priest Catalog. Um, no, it sure does not make any sense that ERA is banned history. Yeah, uh, period. And all the fans across all generations deserve to have it accessible to them. Yes, I agree with that. So get them albums or put them out. Quit being jerks. Uh, tip of the hat to Lemmy. Rest in peace for being a proper British gentleman. And I will forever get Sabaton and Mastodon mixed up. Oh, I don't think you can. Mastodon's the one with the good music. I mean, I did. I don't. I don't mean Sabaton's got bad music, but Mastodon has good music, and Sabaton does a lot of singing about um, wars. Heroes and Wars, and I don't think Mastodon... If Mastodon do songs about Heroes and Wars, they, they cover it up well. Uh, this was the first I've ever heard of Chris Holmes having cancer. While I've never been uh, not a big Wasp fan, I do wish him the best in the fight. I think it's throat cancer he has. And agreed that it would be nice if Blackie could help out just a little bit. Kick the guy some goddamn... That guy, Blackie Loss has made so much money off of, you know, the band and everything else. It wouldn't hurt him to go into the piggy bank and pull out some money to give to Chris Holmes. You know, um, Chris Holmes is just a laid back dude. He does his vape smokes. I think he's a vape smoker now. I hope he's not anymore. I'll be quits. Um, but... Um, He's not the type of guy that's going to go into some big lawsuit to get the, you know, just pay me what you owe me, bro. Uh, you know, he's part of the good, he's, he's, if there's a good part of Wasp and a not good part, Chris Holmes was part of the good part. Um, and that's, you know, people can argue about that because they love the, 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 the newer stuff where he's, you know, he went Christian or whatever, but. The stuff that made them what they are and the name brand that everyone knows, it was Chris Holmes that helped with that. Um, let's see. I strongly encourage every single person who subs to this channel to check out Vinny Vincent was, an Uber, was my Uber driver. It is a total Shane classic. Yes, indeed. Uh, we shall see how Creature, Creatures Fest unfolds and who ultimately gets the payout on the running bet on whether or not Mr. Cusano shows up. If I lived closer to Nashville, I would totally patronize the event just for Trickster. Yeah, I knew that, you know, I had a girlfriend that freaking loved Trickster. And for some reason, I felt jealous by that. I don't know why. I was like, what, is, what does Trickster have that I don't have? You know, I don't know. It was weird. Um, not going to lie, I loved him. Yeah, we got to do some Trickster on this channel. What was their big hit? I always want to say it was something like, you better be good to me, or something. You know, it was something. I can't remember what it was, but uh, I remember they they had one hit. They had one hit wonder. One hit wonder, and they were gone. Uh, so that is it for all of the comments this week. I thank you guys all so much for, for tuning in um, to this. Again, if you listen on, uh, on uh, Spotify, then uh, you can hear the audio version. Uh, you can always go over there and give it a five-star review, even if you don't listen on Spotify, but you have the app. Open it up, put Jive Talking with Shane D in there, and then there should be a little thing around there that says, hey, you want to review this? And if you hit it with five, five stars, maybe, I don't know what that'll do, actually. I don't know if it'll uh, give me better stats or what. Let's see if I can get this going. Yeah, baby. And tone? What was the tone on that? Was it 04? I want something. Give me something. I want something crazy. Cray cray. Ooh. There we go. Ooh. I should really, uh...
Chap talking with Shandy. Chap talking with Shandy. Chap talking with Shandy. Wait.